Hello, my name is Stiley Hayward. I would like to welcome you to the Blessed Hope Ministry. We are a King James grounded family Bible study. These lessons are not to be a substitute for regular church attendance. Nightly I direct my family through the Bible by chapter and verse. We request you to join us and to study from God and His Son Jesus Christ. You may have permission to like, send, or encourage our studies with family or friends. Edification of what God has and what He desires in our life. Study to show thyself approved unto God. A workman that needeth not to be ashamed, rightly divine the word of truth. You may use our studies, but I request that you do not abuse them. For YouTube videos, subscribe below for more videos. And place the thumbs up and leave a comment or email me. Thank you. Deuteronomy chapter 3. Then we turned and went up the way of Bashan, again history. And Og, that guy is mentioned so many times in the Bible, the king of Bashan came out against us. He and all his people to battle at Endriai. And the Lord said unto me, Fear him not, for I will deliver him and all his people and his land into thy hand. And thou shalt do unto him as thou didst unto Sion, king of the Amorites. Which dwell at Heshbon. What's going on? Moses is recapping all the victories that God has done for Israel. So the Lord our God delivered unto our hands Og, he's a giant, also the king of Bashan, and all his people. And we smote him unto none was left to him remaining. And we took all his cities at that time. There was not a city which we took not from them. Three score cities, all the region of Argob, and the kingdom of uh, and the kingdom of Og in Bashan. All these cities were fenced with high walls, gates and bars, the size unwalled towns and great many. Well, let's go back to Numbers thirteen twenty eight. Let's see what Moses is doing. Remember, this is a new generation of people. Numbers 13, 28. And we'll start in verse 26. The spies have come back. And they went and came to Moses and Aaron and to all the congregation of children of Israel under the wilderness of Paran, to Kadesh, and brought back word unto them and all the congregation showed them the fruit of the land. Remember those big grapes. And they told him and said, We came into the land, whether thou sentest us. And surely it floweth with milk and honey. And it is the here, and this is the fruit of it. Nevertheless, the people be strong that dwell in the land. And the cities are walled and very great. And moreover, we saw the children of Anak there. Verse 28 is exactly what we're seeing in Deuteronomy 2 and 3. There's the giants, there's the walled cities, they're as high as the heavens to be, and we kicked butt, Moses saying. Your fathers, your grandfathers, your uncles, we can't do it. There's no way we can do it. And Moses is recapping the history of Israel saying, we did it. And if God did it on the other side of the Jordan River, that's not our land. What do you think he's going to do when you cross that river and go into your land? So Moses is not only recapping history. He is showing by history that God is able and go. We saw the last chapter the other night. So there's no excuse that Moses is leaving these people. They can't say they're giants. Because look, look at all the giant victory we got in chapter 2 of people who are not Israel. Here is Og. He's a giant. All the cities. Look at all the cities. Just what? In five verses. And Joshua is only going to lose one more. That was because of sin. In verse 6 of chapter 3. And we utterly destroyed them. As we did in Shihon, the king of Heshman. Utterly destroying the men, women, and children of every city. Thou shalt not kill. Uh-oh. Got a problem there. God did a victory. We talked about that. Sin. Sin brings war. War brings death. The wages of sin is death. 
How do you like that? And we utterly destroyed them as we did the how the king of Heshbon, utterly destroying the men, the women, the children of every city. But all the cattle and the spoil of the cities we took for a prey to ourselves. And we took at that time out of the hand of the two kings of the Amorites the land that was on this side of Jordan, from the river of Arnon unto Mount Hermon, which Hermon the Sidonians called Shirion, no, and the Amorites called it Sinar. So here's Hermon. It's got two other names in the Bible. And some of the problems that people run about in a Bible is because a place is given two names, three names, four names. Run the references. Find out. Why do they say Jesus went up to Jerusalem? Because it's a mountain. Jesus went down from Jerusalem. It's a mountain. You gotta go up and down there. And see those parentheses? That's information. That's extra information the Holy Spirit say, I want to give you something. I want you to know something. And all the cities of the plain, and all Gilead, and all the Bashan, and all Shekha, and Idria, cities of the kingdom of Og, there he is again, in Bashan. For only Og, there he is again, <laughs> king of Bashan remained of the remnant of giants. Remember they said there's people told there as that and you know, you killed one. David's going to kill a few of them. His, men, his army is going to kill a few of them. Of iron. Iron has no good respect in the Bible. Is it not in Reboth? Imagine God spending one whole verse in the entire word of God to tell you about a giant's bed. Where it is. How big it is. And we don't know the exact date by words where Jesus was born. Isn't that interesting? There's something to this, but I don't know what it is. Nine cubits was the length thereof, and four cubits the breadth of it. After the cubic of men, this bed would be approximately 13 and a half feet by 6 feet. That's a big bed. That's not a king-size bed. That's a giant-size bed. 13 and a half feet? You would figure... To fit comfortably, he would be at least above 10 to 12 feet. Maybe. Unless he just wanted an extra big bed, too. But the Bible says it's iron and it's in Rebbe. That's a lot of information about a bed. It's a lot of information about Og. It's also iron. Interesting. And this land, which we, pos uh, yeah, which we possessed, at that time from Arar which is by the river Arnon, and half Mount Gilead, and the cities there gave I unto the Reubenites and to the Gadites. So you see, when you go back over here and you see verse number 6, we utterly destroyed men, women, children, every city, but we took the cattle. Now that cattle became a sin to the Reubenites, the Gadites, and half tribe of Damascus. Look at all the cattle we got. And this land is so great. This is not your land. This would be almost the area today that you would call Jordan. The country of Jordan I'm talking about. The Reubenites, the Gadites, and the half-tribe of Manasseh did not cross over to proclaim and to inherit the land. They went over to fight. But when the battle was over in Joshua, they went back on the wrong side of the Jordan River. And they're the first ones to go in captivity. So it looks like, because, and they'll say, because this is good green land, the, green, the grass is greener on this side of the Jordan River, because of the cattle, they disobey God. You notice how often cattle, cows, moo-moos, calves, cause people to sin in the Bible. Something about that cow. I mean, if you were going to the golden arches that looks like uh, breasts, you got a king that serves burgers, but there's only one king of kings. Something about cattle. You got cowboys and cowboys in Indian movies. And the rest of Gilead and all Bashan, being the kingdom of Og, there he is again, gave I, Moses, unto the half tribe of Manasseh. Not God giving it, Moses gave it. I, unto the half tribe of Manasseh, and all the regions of Argob with Bashan, which was called the land of the giants. 
There was a whole land of giants. How come Hollywood can have giants but the Bible can't? And go back and look at that guy's bed. And I don't know if that bed and Goliath is just to show us how tall they were. Here they are. And the Edomites kick their butt. The Amorites kick their butt. Israel is afraid. And they go in the land and they kick their butt. Jar the son of Manasseh took all the country of Argob. That's not where they're supposed to be. Onto the coast of Gershii and Machuchinai. And called them after his own name, Bashan Hava Jarir. Jarar unto this day. So he just named it after himself, gave him the name change. Sort of like what America's trying to do today. To try and take all this the Southern Civil War heroes and changing their names and taking down their idols and all that. And they're probably going to replace it with names of the Northern idols and the Northern names. Nothing new under the sun. We live on Fairmont Road. One day may come along and say we're going to name Fairmont. We're going to change the name. The guy bought the land and he's going to name it after himself. That's, that's what's going on. When the cities that are in America today, Chicago, San Francisco, Dallas, they are not the same names that the Indians called them. Or the Native Americans. When Americans came over here, then they gave them names like Washington, Lincoln, MLK. I gave Gilead unto Mecker, unto the Reubenites and the Gadites. I gave from Gilead even unto the river Arnon, half the valley, and the border even unto the river Jebek, which is the border of the children of Ammon. Like I said, we, you check those on maps. You can find maps with Ammon, Moab, and all that. And the plain also in Jordan and the coast thereof. From Chinnereff, that's the Sea of Galilee, even to the Sea of the Plain, and the Salt Sea, that's all the way down south, under Ashdod Pisgah, eastward. These are all on the other side of Jordan. This is what Moses gives to the Reubenites, to the Gadites, and the half-tribe of Manasseh. That's what we're looking at. And it's written down, and the plain also in Jordan, and the coast thereof from Chinnereff, even the Sea of the Plain, and the Salt Sea, under Ashdod Pisgah eastward and I commanded you at that time saying Moses speaking the Lord your God has given you this land to possess it uh uh Moses God did not give you give them that land did he did not when they came to you and said the grass is green and you did not ask God nothing even Moses is guilty of telling a lie We'll see that later on when Joshua. He shall pass over arm before your brethren, the children of Israel, and all that meet for the war. So you're going to go over to help your brethren, but once you're all done, then you're going to go back over the river, which you shouldn't. We'll run into that in Joshua too. About that, uh, the altar they make. And then they blame God. But your wives and your little ones, and your cattle, that's what causes them to stay. You know what cattle that Lot said, ooh, I like that? It was Aaron that said, hey, I threw this gold and out, out came this moo moo. These are the ones that brought you out of Egypt. You know, every religion in the world has some kind of cow. And you can even get a computer today that has a symbol of a cow. I wonder why. What does a cow have to do with a computer? Shall abide in your cities which I have given you. Wait a minute, wait a minute, Moses. Wait a minute. Verse 18. The Lord your God has given you this land to possess it. Verse 19. Which I have given you. That's a contradiction right there. Only because Moses lied. Moses, you gave him that land, not God. You, you, you fumbled at the tongue there. And get down on your knees and repent and bring whatever you need to, for a false report, Moses. We all lie. We all sin. Unto the, unto the Lord's given rest unto your brethren, as well as unto you. And unto, the, unto they also possess the land which the Lord your God has given them, 
Beyond Jordan, see? That's where they're supposed to go. And then shall ye return every man unto his possession, which I have given you. That's twice Moses said that. That land on the other side, on the sun rising, on the east side of, of the Jordan River to Gad, to, I forget it, Gad, Reubenites, and the half-tribe of Manasseh, that was given by Moses, not by God. And I commanded Joshua at that time, saying, Thy eyes have seen all that the Lord your God has done unto these two kings. Joshua is the fighter. He's the military captain. So shall the Lord do unto all the kingdoms, whither thou passest. When you go over, and it begins with Jericho. Jer Jericho, he doesn't raise a weapon. They shout. You shall not fear them. That's what they did at Kadesh Barnea, the, the spies. They brought back fear. Moses has been doing chapter 1, chapter 2, chapter 3. Don't fear. We've gotten the victory. Look what God has done. The Lord your God shall fight with you. That's chapter 1. That's chapter 2. And that's chapter 3. God's taking care of us. And I besought the Lord at that time, saying, should have besought the Lord about the Reubenites, the Gadites, and the Manasseh, but, but look at what the Lord, look at what Moses goes to the Lord about. O Lord God, thou hast begun to show thy servant thy greatness and thy mighty hand. And what God is there, I'm, this is buttering God up. In heaven or on earth that can do according to thy works according to thy might I pray thee let me go over and see the good land that is beyond Jordan that goodly mountain and Lebanon oh look at that God through Jesus through, through Moses through the Holy Spirit says Lebanon is also the land of Israel let me go over please God There's another man like this in the Bible. Oh, Lord God, these thorns in my side. Ow! Oh, Lord God, can you get rid of them? By George, if you believe on Jesus Christ today and send away for this faith hanky, all your problems will be taken care of. Everything will be great. But the Lord was wroth with me and for your sakes and would not hear me. Is Deuteronomy 3... 23, 24, 25, 26. Is that ever preached in the modern churches today that Moses and Paul both sought the Lord about something in their lives and God said, I don't want to hear it. Shut up. Not one more. Paul says three times that God said, that's it, no more. There will be not be a fourth. Moses said it once. God said, there will be not a second time. Now watch this, the Lord was wroth with me for your sake. That's the only time that Moses ever blames Israel. And it was his anger. Remember God said, speak to the rock. You rebels, look, bam, bam. That's it, Moses, you ain't going. And would not hear me, would not hear. That's the same case as Paul. Three times God said, no more for the Lord said unto me, let it suffice thee. Exactly what he kind of told Paul. Speak no more unto me on this matter. Wow. Can you imagine the story of Moses from that little baby that was in the ark and everything he's done from God to, to now? He's about 80 years old, if not older. I forget how old he is when he dies. 120, yeah, so he's got, to be like, he's got to be over 80 now. Everything he's done, all the troubles and problems that Israel's given him. And it comes to the matter about going to that promised land, he's been promised, and God says, I don't want to hear it. Speak no more unto me of this matter. So what do you do with the prosperity? When you got a man in the Old Testament, Moses, and you got a man in the New Testament, Paul, and God says, I don't want to hear it. One thing he tells Paul is his grace is sufficient for it, and it's to keep you to be humbled. But watch this. Get thee up unto mount unto the top of Pisgah. Lift up thy eyes westward, and northward, and southward, and eastward, 
Behold it with thy eyes. You got to be kidding me. Are you telling me Moses is going to go on top of this mount and God is going to show him with Moses' eyes? That's some kind of binoculars. This is the man that God, that Moses said, let me see your glory. And God says, listen, you can't see my face. No man, I'll let you see my backsides. And then he came down, his, his face shone. This guy is over 80 years old and God puts him on the mountain. Thou shalt not go over this Jordan, but you're going to see the land. Okay, we're done with that. Now. But charge Joshua, encourage him, and strengthen him. You better not be bitter, Moses. You better take that man that's under you, Joshua, and you better encourage him. You better help him. Because he's going in after you. For he shall go over before this people. And he shall cause them to inherit the land which thou shalt see, but you're not going to get it. Do you realize but what just read here? Moses is going to go on a mount and God is going to show him without going in all the land. He said, well, what kind of land? He's going to show them Jerusalem. He's going to show him Beersheba. He's going to show him Dan. He's going to show him the Sea of Galilee. But he's never going to step a foot in it. He's never ever seen it until now. You want to talk about binoculars and telescope? And it closes off, so we abode in the valley over against Beth Peor. If Moses had not sinned, I think chapter 4 would have been to the point is, let's start going over the Jordan into Jericho. But we can. we got to refresh these, these, these young people and the laws of the land, which we're going to do. We will start showing them what to do in the land. But Moses, you can't go in. And at between this point and the last chapter of Deuteronomy, Moses never gets bitter. Moses never tells God, well, I ain't going in. I ain't saying another word. Moses never gets angry at God. He does what he does faithfully. And he does what he does. He dies and Joshua takes him in. And Joshua carries the first five books of your Bible, the Pentateuch, the book of Moses, the law. Remarkable man, Moses, but we're all sinners, saved by grace.